YouTube, welcome to a brand new edition of the Pete McHugh Show. This is part two of our little introduction on nano reef aquariums. And today we're going to talk about something very important, cycling your tank. Why do you do this? Why is this, a, why is this very, very vital? It's important because what you're doing is you're essentially creating an ecosystem. And I'm going to talk about how you do that. And Gage is going to talk about how the cycling process works. Okay. What you're essentially doing when you're creating an ecosystem or a saltwater tank is you're simulating the ocean. Now, the rule of thumb for live rock is a pound per gallon of water. The same thing applies for the sand. In the sand, what you're doing, what you have are microorganisms and all kinds of nutrients within the tent and the, in the bed itself. And that's going to simulate your ocean environment. It's going to take time for your tank to cycle. But this is one of the most important processes of your whole deal. If you don't do this correctly, on first run, you're going to have all kinds of problems. And now, Gage, do you want to talk about the cycling process just a little bit here? Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> like Peter just mentioned, we need rock and we need sand. Um, this live rock, it's... They call it live rock because it's live. It's just like the sand. This stuff comes from the ocean. Um, so once you have a pound each of your rock and your sand per gallon of water, uh, what's going to happen next is all these microorganisms, they're going to start their process of breaking down uh, bacteria and also creating their own bacteria, which is broken down and then used by something else in the tank. Um, what's going to happen when you first set your tank up is you're going to go through what's called the ammonia cycle. And basically that's just your tank living, dying, living, dying, it's going through a big phase, it's going through a big change, and all these organisms um, are trying to establish this ecosystem in your tank. Um, a lot of people, when they go out and they start a new saltwater tank, they buy a fish and they put it in their tank because they're led to believe that adding fish to your tank helps cycle the tank faster. Uh, it's this is a myth. It's a myth, it's not true. Um, more than likely what will happen if you do add a fish to a very newly established tank before the ammonia cycle takes place and the bacteria has a chance to break down and do what it's supposed to be doing, uh, your fish is going to die. You're going to have an ammonia spike, which happens in every new tank. You have an ammonia spike and uh, your fish are going to die. So when you're setting up a new aquarium, as Peter mentioned, stress is key. Uh, we get our sand, we, give our, we get our rock. Uh, don't put anything in your tank for at least two weeks. It's gonna, again, it's going to depend on the size of the tank you have. Um, nano tanks, which is what our series is on, I would recommend at least two weeks, two to three weeks, um, to allow your tank to fully cycle properly. Uh, after that, you should be able to add some fish. Start off with something cheap, um, and then work your way up from there. You know, you don't want to throw in a fifty-dollar fish and watch it die. Here's a statistic, really quick. Two thirds, sixty percent of all fish in the first, I think it's like a couple weeks of uh, m uh, maybe month, maybe I can't remember the statistic, but sixty percent of your fish are gonna die. Mm -hmm. It's just part of the process, and I, I know I, I'm not saying that to scare you. I'm just trying to bring you down to reality. So start with fish that are gonna be cheap, they're gonna be resilient, they're gonna be reliable, mm -hmm. and don't get into the heavy stuff until you're experienced. Um, if you're somebody who's looking for a cheap fish and you ask yourself, what should I get? Um, there's a lot of damsels out there that are cheap. However, I'll warn you, damsels are very territorial. So if you plan on adding any other fish to your system after that, you may want to remove that specific fish. Um, clownfish are, in my opinion, an excellent starter fish. They're extremely resilient. They're extremely hardy. They're not too expensive. Um, unless If you buy them in pairs, you can actually usually get a deal on a pair as opposed to buying them two separate fish at two different times. Um, chromis, blue-green chromis is an option. Uh, just something that's not really going to you know, eat a hole in your wallet and something that if it does die, um, it's, it's not mm. going to be a, a total loss to you. Yeah, because otherwise, you know, we'll warn you right off, this is an expensive hobby, and if you want to start with a good start, don't throw, don't throw mad money on your first attempts because mm -hmm. it's just not a wise idea. Mm -hmm. Figure out your budget. Um, I will tell you that depending on where you buy it and what kind it is, live sand is, uh, you could probably get a 20 pound bag of it for about $23, $24. Uh, your live rock in general, you have to remember that it comes from the ocean so it's going to be really expensive. Uh, the cheapest I've seen it is $4 a pound. 
which you know you need 10 pounds that's a that's 40 dollars right there but you also have to remember that when you're talking about pounds of rock you're also paying for water weight so a true five pound rock may not be truly five pounds that rock dry it may be only be three pounds um, if you kind of understand what i'm saying so maybe with rock if you're doing uh, if you're doing dry rock you can do a straight 10 pounds if you're doing a live rock i would probably push for a 15 or 16 just to make sure that you do get the appropriate poundage necessary for your tank give yourself two weeks have patience and if you do it correctly you're gonna have one heck of a tank mm -hmm. And if, you know, you, you start doing your budget and you say to yourself, well, I can't afford live rock, um, that's okay because dry rock, it's cheap. Um, you don't have to pay for all the water weight if you do have it shipped somewhere. It's generally about 2 to $3 a pound as opposed to 5 um, And if you do your sand bed correctly, your dry rock, which basically is just dead rock, will turn into live rock. It may take three to four, sometimes six months to do, but it will turn to uh, live rock. And one of the benefits of having dry rock in an aquarium as opposed to live rock... It's cheaper. It's cheaper. Live rock does speed up the cycling process. It does give you that initial boost of extra bacteria, but it also has the potential of introducing pests to your aquarium. Um, if you put dry rock in an aquarium, the only thing that's going to be in your aquarium is what you choose to be to uh, put in it. So it's important to know that for those of you that do want coralline algae growth, um, live rock, maybe go to your pet store, find a piece of live rock that doesn't appear to have anything uh, nuisance on it. And what I mean by that is an aptasia is going to be the big one that you're going to see. A lot of other things you won't be able to. But um, there's packs out there that you can buy that grow coralline algae. So if you're just wanting coralline algae and you think you have to get it from live rock, go out, buy some dry rock, and then search online, and you should be able to find uh, coralline algae growing kits. If not, if a friend of yours has a tank or your fish store has a tank, uh, scrapings of coralline algae, just put it into your tank, and it will spread. So um, I hope you guys learned something today. If you guys have any questions or comments, let us know. Uh, my name is Gage. Check out my channel, Outdoor Instincts Live, all one word. Uh, joined here with Peter from the Pete McHugh Show. So tune in more for some more Nano Reef specials that we've got coming. Peace out, everybody. See Got you later. It.